Hi folks, this is Dan with Dan's Retirement Journey. I'm Philippines Bound. So a few of my friends have asked me uh, recently why I want to move to the Philippines. Well, number one reason is my wife is uh, was born there and she's now a naturalized U.S. citizen. But the main reason is, is that because uh, it's cheaper to live there, I would say it's about one third the cost of living here in Sacramento area. For example, we're going to be uh, starting to build a bungalow house, three bedroom, two bath, Filipino style, out of hollow block in the Philippines, starting, uh, I would say, late November, somewhere around Thanksgiving. And um, it's probably going to cost us somewhere around, I would say, ten to fourteen thousand dollars in order to build. So you know what it would be like to build a house here in Sacramento or anywhere in the United States. It's becoming very, very expensive. And so I would say in total, it costs about one third to live in the Philippines than it does here in Sacramento. And so I do have, or I will have an income stream other than social security. So I'm uh, about going to be 64 pretty soon next year early part of next year and I can't and I haven't uh, started to collect yet I'm still working full-time and so I'm going to have that uh, for an income stream uh, which by the time I get ready to retire should be around I don't know two thousand dollars a month I would say and then I also have a uh, a pension coming my way and uh, I would say that uh, it's a save, you know, based on what I've done in the past in my lifetime when I realized that uh, I wasn't making much progress working for myself for the first half of my working life. I decided that I would go and, and uh, get a government job because after all, um, Sacramento is a government town. But that took a little bit of doing because it meant basically I had to go back to school and I had to... Uh, um, get at least a minimum of bachelor's degree. Unfortunately for me, I was able to uh, also obtain a master's degree. I decided that I would do those back to back because I knew that the opportunity to go back to school and complete my education um, probably would be a little bit harder to do unless I went straight through. I think I was almost 40 years old by the time I ended up completing the master's degree and then getting this job here um, in governmental services, which which occurred actually back to back. So, okay, so, so back to the reasons why uh, it's easy for me to obtain a residency visa. That's one reason why I do retire to the Philippines. Uh, because I'm married to a Philippine national, national, I can get what's called, I think it's the 13A or 13B visa which will allow me to get uh, what's equivalent to a green card here in the States. Um, the other reason is cost of living, number two. And number three would be because it reminds me very, very much of what it was like growing up in the 60s. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think that perhaps I'm chasing my, my youth. One reason for doing these series of videos is because um, I'm curious as to other, if others that are getting close to retiring start having these weird thoughts crossing their mind and start looking at, looking for, let's say, uh, old friends that, um, that you grew up with, uh, to see how they're doing. And also, um, you start getting a little reminiscent of the way, uh, you know, what was going on when you were growing up. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to be one of the places that, um, you know, I enjoy take, uh, you know, taking a stroll down every now and again is Del Paso Boulevard, no, old North Sacramento. So it just, so, just so happens that I live right around the corner from, uh, the place known as the Boulevard. And I'm just going to share a couple of, uh, buildings on the street locations that, um, mean something to me. And I'll, I'll try and explain why. But I think uh, mostly it's because Del Paso Boulevard reminds me of the main streets that now now exist in some 
uh, cities and provinces provinces in the Philippines. And so I enjoy coming down here and reminiscing about how I first moved here to Sacramento back in 1986. And so since I visited the Philippines about 13 or 14 times, um, it kind of reminds me of some of the places that I visited. And of course, also another reason for going to the Philippines is prior to the global uh, calamity that's taking place now, it also had a very, very good economy with a growth growth rate uh, of somewhere between six and seven percent. And so, you know, when you when you start uh, thinking about retiring or else I have started thinking about retiring, you know, one of the things you think about is would you rather be in an economy that is doing OK, such as the United States and now is slightly in decline, but it should come back fairly quickly. Or would you like to be, would you like to immerse yourself in a growing economy? You know, a place that's just going crazy economically because they have an educated po population and they have a very, very young population. So those things were really important to me and my wife. And I think that um, because of those reasons, you know, I plan on retiring uh, to the Philippines and my wife certainly isn't finding me on that. So now we're going to take a look at Del Paso Boulevard, a couple of a couple of locations that I find interesting because it has that Filipino feel from the 1950s and the 1960s. But I actually think that some of these buildings on the boulevard have been here since the 1920s and the 1930s. But anyway, we're going to take a look and, uh, you know, you tell me what you think. Here's the historic U.S. Route 40 marker. This used to be the main drag, the main highway or the main route that you'd get to as you traveled across the United States. And then of course it ran right through or was part of Del Paso Boulevard. So we're right here on the corner of Del Paso Boulevard and Arden Way. And we, that, this is where sits the monument of Virgil Chapman, the mayor of Old North Sacramento. A lot of people don't know that North Sac was its own city at one time. But if you come over here, corner of uh, Del Paso Boulevard and Arden Way, you'll see Virgil sitting here as always wishing everybody a nice day. Now I'm going to spin around here and we're going to take a little walk down Del Paso Boulevard. Uh, the sun is facing me so I hope we don't get too much glare. I think I'll hold the camera. I'll adjust it so that it's just slightly out of the, the glare of the sun and we'll see how we do walking down the boulevard here. So camera might be a little bit shaky because actually this is my first um, walk and talk video and I'm sure I'm not holding the gimbal correctly and when I come back to edit it'll be interesting to see how this video turns out. So I want you to know coming into view is this a and W root beer stand. So even they, and this Kentucky Fried Chicken building here, they tried to maintain the flavor of the old 1950s diner sort of thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to make our way down to Little Joe's a diner. Little Joe's is a place that I hung out a lot at when I first moved here back in 1989, somewhere, somewhere around there, somewhere between 86 and 89. 
I moved up to Sacramento from Southern California. I've actually lived here in Sacramento longer than where I, where I grew up as a youth, as a kid. You can see as they, they've done a lot to pretty the place up. You know, there have been many, many incarnations of Del Paso Boulevard. And uh, I think they have a good idea, a good plan to make it into an artsy, craftsy sort of place that people would want to visit with art galleries and artist lofts and the like. And I think it'll work one day, but it's been a 20 year struggle thus far. We have a lot of wall art that really allows the boulevard to pop. It gives it a, a sort of a, a cultural flavor unique to Sacramento. Uh, but I'm going to be doing a little video on that sometime in the near future. Uh, we're coming up on Little Joe's. So Little Joe's, I don't know if many of you know, but it's been here probably from the early days of US Route 40. And it's no longer in business. Uh, Little Joe bought it. I uh, don't know exactly. He wasn't the first on the boulevard to own this diner. But uh, recently closed. His son, his son George operated this diner after he passed away in 2002. And of course, due to, you know, the global calamity and uh, the current state of the world, you know, it was very, very hard, very, very dip difficult for George to, you know, in order to sustain it. But anyway, let's go take a look and see what we can see. Looks like it might be for rent or for sale. If anybody is interested in reviving Little Joe's. I used to come in here and get a cup of coffee and and $1.99 ham and eggs. Take a peek inside. As you can see, you've got classic diner furniture. And I'm gonna approach, uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can get a nice shot of the cash register. There you go. I don't know how good this video is gonna, gonna come out due to the reflection of, uh, that's there, but you, Hopefully, hopefully you can see the cash register. Little Joe used to sit right there at that cash register and I'd come in and he'd welcome me. Hi Dan, it's been a long time since I've seen you. It's a very interesting thing. All Little Joe had to do was meet you once and he remembered your name forever. And up until a few, a year or two, before he passed, little Joe would, would still greet me the same way. He knew exactly what my order was. And he, as soon as I walked in the door, he says, hi, Dan, how have you been? And uh, let me get you your, let me get you your, your ham and eggs over medium and that cup of coffee going. And he yelled, yelled to the back, ham and eggs and cup of coffee. He was one of the most compassionate and kind folks that I've ever met. And you know what? His son George and George's sister were exactly the same. 
they were very kind and compassionate people and I'm sorry because it, I'm sorry to see the place close it's uh, but I hadn't been but I'll have to admit I haven't been in here much and so um, more recently you know uh, they had limited hours mostly breakfast at breakfast and lunch and then they close up for dinner which made sense because you you kind of have to deal with the cost of labor and that sort of thing it was very very difficult it's been very difficult to make money in this economic environment so this is little joe's let's see i want to i want to come over here and show you the old jukebox let's see if we can get a good glimpse of it I think we're getting a little sun glare in here, but basically, I think I believe this jukebox is the same one that I used to play when I first started visiting this diner, Little Joe's, back in 1989 or so when I first moved to Sacramento. Now, what I like to do is I'm going to sort of pan around and I'm going to show you another historic building. I'm not sure you could see it so well from this angle, but you've got Cardinal Lanes. And when I when I first moved here, it was still a bowling alley. And so I've played a couple of games here. I don't know how many lanes. It didn't have very many lanes inside there. As you can see it's not very wide. But uh, I, bowled, I bowled a few games there and I've, I've drunk a, a few beers inside this, this bowling alley. And just like Little Joe's, it's kind of a shame that it's no longer operating. I'm not sure if they repurpose this building, what, what it could be. But uh, I'm thinking that just restoring it to its original glory would probably be the way to go. Across the street there, Across this vacant lot, you've got um, the old SoCal Speed Shop, and then a new business, King Kong Brewing Company. So there you have it. And this is the reason why I want to move to the Philippines. You know, give you a little taste. It's because it reminds me a lot of growing up in the 1950s as well as... as um, Del Paso Boulevard reminds me of being in the Philippines. Well, take care for now. Don't forget to subscribe and like, share, and comment. And we'll see you in the next video.